Hey guys. Okay. So number two in the 50 Architects You Should Know Women edition is none other than Julia Morgan. She was a pioneer in the industry and did so much in terms of earthquake safety, especially for us here in California. So let's get into it. Julia Morgan was born in 1872 here in San Francisco, California. In 1894, she was the first woman to graduate UC Berkeley with a civil engineering degree, only because they didn't offer an architecture program. She did later go on to earn her architecture degree from a college or a university in Paris, um, which I'm, whose name I'm about to butcher, a Col de Bazaar in Paris. Anyway, she was the first <laughs> student to earn such a degree. Um, and she once wrote in a letter that um, her professor always seemed astonished when she did anything of least intelligence. And so it sounds like she had a bit of an uphill battle during her studies. But nonetheless, she did become the first woman licensed as an architect in the state of California. And she founded her firm in 1904. She was methodical about her practice. She was never one to like sketch something on a napkin or do anything on a whim. Homegirl worked 18 hour days and she never married, which girl, I feel ya. Divorce day here and 18 hour days all the time. Um, my friends always have to remind me to sleep and eat. Um, she was very private about her personal life. So there isn't much known whether she ever had, you know, some side pieces or anything like that. We don't know. We, we all just, we just know that she never married and um, that she was very, very private about her um, personal life. She had an insane amount of commissions, 750 built during her career for an average of 18 per year. That is insane. So even for a man, that's a lot, but for a woman and especially in her time, that was a huge accomplishment, 750 commissions. She did one interview once, and after she was assumed to be the decorator, she refused to speak to the press after that. She had no time for them. Um, she also refused to enter competitions. She refused to write articles, submit photographs for architectural magazines, or serve on committees dismissing such activities fit only for talking architects. So, you know, in a time, where right now everything's about social media and everything's about posting and getting recognition for your work. Um, I, I have to say, I admire that and I kind of live by that. I mean, I should post about my work more often, but I, I don't and, and I, I, I'm going to try to be better at that. But, um, you know, to some extent, I really do love the fact that she just kind of let her work speak for itself. Um, also, though, being a, a woman in a male-dominated profession, um, a lot of her clients, I mean, she had 750 commissions, so obviously um, a lot of her clients were male clients, and they obviously didn't mind giving work to a, a woman-ran architecture firm, but then I'm also sure that they weren't going to be okay with her kind of, you know, tying her name to like a feminist movement or, or anything like that, so um, that probably had a lot to do with it, too. She just didn't want... Um, to like rock the boat and, and, you know, end up losing work over something like that. So she rather just let her work kind of speak for itself and, and let, let everything kind of just, um, fall as it may. Um, you know, I just think she was a no-nonsense lady and I, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, sometimes I'll, we just want, again, to let her speak, her work speak for ourselves. Same went for preserving her archives. Um, she didn't preserve any of her drawings or any of her documents. You know, she when she retired, she had them all destroyed. She figured that anybody that would want them would be her clients um, and her clients already had their own copies. So she just figured nobody else would want these, you know, only my clients, so just destroy them. So she had them all destroyed. So we have no evidence or no um, like drawings, I should say, because we have evidence, but no drawings. Um, of, of any of her work. She was never one to kind of hitch her architecture to one style or theory, but she did embrace the arts and crafts movement, um, but she used it more as like an inspiration, not um, something that she would follow to a T. So she kind of just 
designed whatever she wanted, um, not kind of tying herself to any one aesthetic or any one movement, um, though she uh, was known to enjoy the arts and craft movement a bit. Um, her designs did, however, push engineering boundaries. Um, I'm assuming because of her civil engineering background, um, but she was one of the first uh, architects to use reinforced concrete, and that was a very new process back then. And so um, a lot of her designs did push engineering uh, boundaries, which um, I'm sure she enjoyed because she had that background. She designed all over California, but William Hurst and his mother Phoebe Hurst were her most supportive clients and Hearst Castle being her most famous commission, which was built from 1919 to 1947. She was one of the first architects to introduce green design and also one of the first architects to use reinforced concrete construction, as I mentioned, which was a very new building process at the time. Because her will, her buildings withstood the 1906 earthquake, she began, she became the go-to for earthquake safe designs. So she became very popular after her buildings withstood the 1906 earthquake because you know whatever she did seemed to work, um, which was reinforced concrete. So um, that's when she started to like really pick up her work. Really started to um, her, her commission started to pick up. Um, some of her major projects, of course, were Hearst Castle, um, Oakland YWCA. Um, Asilomar Conference Grounds, Harbor Area YWCA in San Pedro, um, Hollywood Studio Club YWCA, the Riverside Art Museum, St. John's Presbyterian Church, and uh, Mills College, and of course so many more. I mean the women had 750, but I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, most of her body work were the um, YWCA um, Phoebe Hurst recommended her to the organization and you know they hired her for one and loved her work and so they continued working with her and so a lot of her work is um women centers. She passed away February 2nd 1957 and she just recently in 2014 received the highest honors in architecture which is the AIA gold medal um which has never ever gone to a woman. So she was um, the first woman to receive the AIA gold medal. And that, my friends, is Julia Morgan. Um, pioneer to a T, homegirl paved the way um, for all of us and we're all legit following in her footsteps. And um, I just love that she was like a zero given woman. You know, she was just like, I'ma do, I'ma do me. I'ma do what I wanna do in the style that I want to do it. If one day I want to be, you know, Baroque, I'll be Baroque. If I, one day I want to be arts and crafts, I'll be arts and crafts. Um, she didn't really stick to anything and I love that. Um, we'll go through her body of work here in a second and you'll see how um, it varied so much, you know, her aesthetic varied so much. I think she um, more so geared her designs to what her clients wanted and what, um, you know, what they were hoping to achieve as opposed to um, whatever she seemed to like at the time. So um, let's go through her body work because again, that's my favorite part. And um, you'll get to see how, you know, her, her um, style just kind of changed um, with pretty much every design. So let's go through it. This is Hearst Castle. This is one of the pools inside Hearst Castle. And as you can see, it is stunning. Um, so much mosaic work, so much intricacy. Um, the color combinations are amazing. I, I, don't, I mean, this is just breathtaking. I have like no words. It's just so, so beautiful. I have yet to be to Hertz, visit Hearst Castle, but I am going to visit it because, uh, hello, this thing is gorgeous. This is a aerial view of the grounds of Hearst Castle. So you can see it's a beautiful, beautiful place I can't wait to go um and there's a tons of pools so there's an exterior pool and an inside pool and being a pool designer um I know what it takes to like tile a pool with tiny little mosaic tile and let me tell you that was not an easy thing to do nor was it uh, a cheap thing to do um and it was absolutely a time consum consuming thing to do so it's amazing Here's a, a view of one of the buildings. 
front facades of um, one of the buildings in Hearst Castle. And again, it's just gorgeous, beautiful, so much detail. I'm absolutely in love. I cannot wait to visit this place as soon as everything opens back up. And yet another view of Hertz Castle. So he didn't give her very many parameters. Um, he basically just said, I want something that's a little bit more user friendly than the um, tents we're using right now. So he pretty much gave her free reign. Um, there was quite a bit of um, hurdles to, that she had to um, conquer here. There was no water, no access to water, um, a pretty gnarly terrain that she had to, um, you know, grade and, and break into. Um, it was a 500 mile uh, round trip commute for her once a week. Um, so yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy, um, but she did it and she did an amazing, amazing job. This is the Riverside Art Museum. Again, like we just came from Hearth Castle where it's this gorgeous, intricate design. And then you go, you come to this, which is so much more subtle, but still yet very, very beautiful. Um, and you can tell this is definitely that reinforced concrete. This is the Oakland YWCA, which is now obviously not being used as that. Now it's an academy, but back in the day, it was the Oakland YWCA. And again, one of the first buildings that was, um, built using reinforced concrete and again so different from her last two commissions i mean this i love that she just did whatever she thought would be appropriate for her i'm assuming her clients for the area anyway this is mills college in oakland california she did quite a bit for mills college um there was about six buildings i think she created for them maybe more but I'm pretty sure it was six, and this is one of the towers, one of the bell towers she created for them. This is the Asilomar Conference Grounds in Pacific Grove, California. Yeah, again, such a different aesthetic, totally different, but I love this rustic interior. I love the use of the different um, type of windows, different style windows, um, and just so many windows. Like there's an insane amount of windows and just this one side of the, of the building, which um, I'm sure is providing a ton ton of natural light inside so I absolutely love this and this is St. John's Presbyterian Church in Berkeley California she was um, known to say that this was her most um, arts and crafts building so this is the one where she really did stick to an aesthetic or a movement and um, it was the arts and craft movement for this one and she said this was one of her favorite buildings and that's that. That's Julia Morgan, a true pioneer and just like all around badass, right? I mean, Homegirl just did it all. She did all the things and was like zero um, Fs given, just not like non-apologetic about it. And she just kind of let her work speak for her, for her and what a body of work. I mean, just that Hearst Castle alone, she outdid herself. So that's Miss Julia Morgan, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I can't wait to talk to you guys tomorrow about the next um, architect or woman in construction. And until then, make good choices. Please go look at something pretty today because life is way too short not to look at something pretty every day. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys.